Hey class, Mr. Welker here, and to kind of fill in the next couple of days before we go on spring break, I thought we'd go ahead and start exploring Autodesk Inventor. This is the CAD software that we're going to be using a lot in the uh, second half of our uh, semester. And in this home page, we can see a lot of different features. We can open up past projects, we can open up um, some tutorial files and information that they have. We can also create new types of files. So in Autodesk Inventor, we're going to talk about all of these different parts, but today we're actually going to literally create a part. So we click on New Part, and this is where we start talking about sketches and what we've uh, been doing with pencil and paper. We need to know how to create these ideas two-dimensionally before we can actually make them three-dimensional. So the first step is we create a two-dimensional sketch and it brings up a kind of shape that lets us decide which plane we want to create. Could be a side view, could be a front view, could be from top. And since we're basically just doing a two-dimensional object, we're going to add some depth to it though. I'm going to build it on the XZ plane. So I click to select that. And now we've got some drawing tools, we've got some geometry tools, we've got some dimensioning, we've got some special features. Now we're going to be talking about these in more detail as it becomes appropriate, but since we're doing a basic keychain shape, we're going to start with a simple circle object. To do that, go ahead, click on circle, and then on the very center of this object, where these lines go ahead and converge, there's a little green dot that appears if our cursor's there. And that gives the computer an idea of like where these objects, where these drawings actually belong with relationship to one another. So I start by clicking on that point, and then we start drawing that circle. Now, it doesn't know what size we actually want. We can actually type that in now, or we can type that in later. I'm going to show you both methods. First one is we can go ahead and type in a value now. So I think I want this keychain to be 1.25 inches diameter. So I type in 1.25, hit enter, and now we've got that basic circle. That's all we need for this particular sketch. We're going to have a series of them to make the final object. So we finish sketch, and then we go into a tool called Extrude. So Extrude is going to go ahead and add some dimension to the object. So we click on Extrude, and instantly it wants to make it a one inch um, depth, which I think is a little too much for a keychain. So we're going to go ahead and back that down, and we're going to put in 0.1 inch instead of an entire inch, so one-tenth. Hit OK, and we've now created kind of a flat disk for us to continue building the keychain with. Now we kind of repeat these steps. We create a new sketch. This time we can choose where we want it. So notice how there's kind of a white line around the entire circle. That means that we're going to draw on top. Click on that, and it's the same sort of steps. It changes our orientation, and we go ahead we're going to draw another circle and in this case I'll roughly size it but I go ahead and create it and without dimension it becomes a green line instead of a blue or a white or a black line this is where we go ahead and use the dimensioning tools to go ahead and put some dimensions to the objects that we actually want to create so I think for this one I want to create kind of a space between I want want to go ahead and say make this 0.1 inch no that's too much let's back that off to 0 0.05 inches bit more reasonably size you know not going to be too massive actually that's built in let's try 0 0.075 yeah I think that's a bit closer to what I laid out so 0 0.075 we can go for that extra precision where we want. And in this case, it knows what it is. So by adding that dimensioning, it's now changed into kind of a blue purplish line. We'll finish this sketch, repeat the extrude process, and then we'll click on the edge. And it defaults to the last extrusion that we actually made. Okay. Now I think 0.1 is a little too much. So let's make that 0.05 inches. 
automatically shows us what it's doing. We can get an idea if that's going to fit or not, depending on how much we've planned ahead. Hit OK. And we now have a second part of our keychain. The next step that I want to do is I want to go ahead and pull the, put a hole in it so we can actually put it onto a keychain. So we start a sketch. Now pay attention to the view cube in the top right hand corner. The view cube, this has actually changed the way that we actually see the object. We can take it, look at the right, we can look at it in a corner, we can look at it in front, and since it's rotating in a circle we can't really see much. We can look at it from corners, or when I actually choose where I want to draw that sketch, in this case on the front of it, it goes ahead and puts it in place. Now, notice how top is kind of on its side. We're going to rotate that. So now we're actually seeing it. This will be the top. This will be to the left of it. This will be to the right. Whereas if we looked at it kind of different ways, different orientations, we could get things mixed up. But we know that we want the circle of the keychain to fit on the top and we want it fairly centered. So what I do is I hover over that center point and then go straight up and then set the keychain size. I think the hole for this should be 1 8th of an inch so 0.125 inches and then we still need to dimension how far it is from the actual object. Okay. So I think point four or five inches will be good for it. But notice how it's still green. In the bottom left or right hand corner of the screen it shows that there's one dimension missing. Well if we take off the dimensioning tool I'm just going to hit escape to go ahead and kind of clear that out. We can still move this around. It doesn't quite know where it needs to be. So one of the things that we will eventually talk about is these geometric constraints. In this case, we know that it wants to be vertically in the same edge as that center point. So we'll click on the center of the circle that we just drew and the circle of the, cir uh, the keychain itself, the center point. And now we have it fully constrained and we can see that in the bottom right hand corner. We'll finish the sketch and then we'll go ahead and do another extrude. In this case, it's wanting to create some new material. We actually want to clear that out. So, under the extrude tool window that popped up, we can actually tell it we want to extrude that information, make it a cut feature instead of an actual build. And then instead of distance, I'm going to say I wanted to just cut through everything. Okay. So I don't need to actually set any dimensions for that. And now, if we take a look at it, you can see it's drilled all the way through. The next step is I want to go ahead and put my initials on it. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around. And under the text tool, I'm going to go ahead and click, type, and put in my initials. Now, I've already played around with this some, and I know that I want my initials to be 0.24 inches. So it's not quite the points that we use in Word, but a lot of this setup is pretty similar. And since I know that I'm going to be centering some things, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to just go ahead and center that data. Okay. It goes ahead and places it, get out of the tool itself, and I can kind of drag it into place and then under the geometric constraints we're going to do some symmetry. Symmetry, we click on the two lines of the object and then we tell it that we want it centered. But right now we don't actually have a center line. So under drawings we're going to use the line tool up here on the left just like we use circles and we're going to tell it that we want to make it a center line and we're going to go ahead and draw it through pretty much the entire circle. Now notice how if I'm off to the side it shows an angle 
but if I have it kind of clicked in the center, 90 degree angle, it also shows that same vertical constraint that we used earlier. So we set that up to green line because it's not fully dimensioned. I'm going to hit escape to go ahead and get out of that tool. But now we can go ahead and use that symmetry feature to choose the two sides of the text that I've added and then for the third line, that center line. And that goes ahead, locks it in place. I want to do kind of the same thing for Southeast Raleigh Magnet High School. So SRMHS. And then for size, you can play around with this sum, but I think I'm going to make it 0.18 inches. Escape to kind of get out of the tool. We can click and drag to kind of put it into rough place and then use the constraints to go ahead lock it in. And then I'm going to do some dimensioning to go ahead and say I want the bottom line of that block. Oh, sorry. Let's step back and make another center line. Okay. This case, instead of having a vertical one, we'll have a horizontal one. And notice that horizontal constraint that shows up when it's at zero angle. Okay. Didn't create a center line like I thought, so I've now right clicked, click on center line, creates it. Now we can use that dimension tool like I planned. Okay. Actually, going to go ahead and have that centered at 0.18 and you could kind of play around with it. It looks like it's decided that it's going to have those equal distances apart so you can kind of play around with this. There's a lot of different ways of approaching these problems. You know, Just like we've talked about with math, you have that original problem that you're solving and you have the final answer that you want but there are a lot of steps that you can do to actually find that. Let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead and change this a little bit more. Instead of having 0.18, let's try 0.15, bring them a bit closer together. Yep, I think that works. Okay, for symmetry, I think I need to set up Southeast Raleigh the same way. And that looks Pretty good. Let's edit the uh, the text just to make sure that that is centered, and it wasn't. So I change that. That looks better. Finish the sketch, and then text just like every other drawing we can do. We can go ahead and extrude it. Instead of setting a specific distance, though, I'm going to go ahead and select the two blocks of text. And then instead of having it as distance, I'm going to have it 2, and I'll tell it that I want the same distance as that rim. That finishes up the, uh, the sketch. If we look at the home view, we can see this is what the keychain will look like, and I'll have the 3D printed one to go ahead and show you a little later. Make sure you save your files. Okay. And when you upload your files to me, I'll be able to go ahead, open them up in Inventor, and then be able to 3D print them. So I hope this helps. If you need some uh, extra assistance, we've got some other videos on Autodesk, and um, I'll be happy to help you in class. Let's see what you guys can create.